The problem we have in the world today isn't that our payment systems are broken, it's that they're antiquated. There are 2.5 billion people out there who don't have access to their financial system. Settlement today requires third parties. There simply is no way for two institutions to reconcile their obligations without having to rely on a third party to arbitrate. If you have a central operator, you can't construct that value exchange system on the fundamentals of the internet. When the web was originally designed, one of the main goals that they had that they didn't achieve was to have a way to transfer value. Ripple is an open source protocol that is designed to facilitate the settlement of funds in real time in any currency. Having a standardized protocol allows financial institutions to instantly connect with anyone on the network. Basically acts as an internet for value exchange. My name is Chris Larson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ripple Labs. Ripple Labs is the technology company that originally invented the Ripple protocol. The Ripple Protocol now is open source, it's really a public good, Ripple Labs doesn't own it. Anybody can use it for free uh, as they see fit, really like an HTTP for money. Our job is really just to continue to introduce uh, new innovations that make the core more stable, more scalable, more secure, and importantly, uh, bridges and connections to that core to make it easier for banks, financial institutions, market makers, developers, eventually anybody with an interest to integrate to that core system. That's a big task and we think you need a phenomenal team of very, very smart, dedicated people working full time on that protocol if this really is going to be an internet for value exchange. When looking at the payment system today, it's comprised of a series of components that are designed to custody assets and transmit them around. So at the very top of the payment stack, we have application layers like PayPal, Stripe, Square, applications, technologies that interface with consumers and businesses looking to execute a transaction. Below that, we have banks, the institutions that custody the assets themselves. Moving below that, we start to look at the core interbank infrastructure, rule sets around business continuity, safety and soundness, regulatory compliance. Below that, we have messaging standards, so we can think about SWIFT codes, ACH payment messages, visa messages. And finally below that we have a settlement infrastructure which is operated primarily by the central banks domestically and correspondent banks internationally. So where Ripple fits today in the existing payment stack is at the bottom. I'm Patrick Griffin, head of business development for Ripple Labs. Traditional funds transfers today effectively rely on intermediaries to coordinate settlement. So while payments can happen bilaterally, fund settlement has to move through a network of third party intermediaries. What that creates is a system where payments can be lost and liquidity costs a lot more money. Before joining Ripple Labs, I was working as a Bitcoin volunteer for three years, um, trying to get Bitcoin into the mainstream. And what attracted me to Ripple was just the amazing team that they put together. My name is Stefan Thomas and I'm CTO at Ripple Labs. One big priority for us at Ripple Labs is to build APIs, which then allow financial institutions and developers to work together and build apps that are innovative and tie into the financial infrastructure. There are parallels between the internet of the 80s, um, where you had CompuServe and Genie and AOL as individual islands that are unfederated, and then the value web as it exists today, where you have individual payment networks like PayPal, Alipay, and M-Pesa, which also are not connected together yet. And so we think that the same thing will happen where these start to be interoperable through some common protocol. All the progress we've seen over the last 20 years of, of the internet, now seeing that bleed into payment systems, transaction systems. So again, it's not that our systems are broken. They work. They're antiquated. And if you could take a step up now, get that analogy of value moving like information has been over the last two decades, opens up so many possibilities for existing businesses, the incumbents, their customers, and for the global economy. Now you have uh, the possibility to deliver real-time payment messages against real-time fund settlement on a good funds basis. The web gave a lot of people access to information who didn't have it before, and we think the value web will give a lot of people access to the economy that they didn't have before. This notion of an internet for value exchange, we think this is just great news for everybody. Mm -hmm.